Revolution of the Earth, Summer and Winter Solstice, and Equinox. Now I told you in the video where I explain what are the type of motions of Earth that revolution of Earth is what? It is the movement of the Earth. So in this particular video if you notice this is basically Earth. The white one. The line going across is the axis of the Earth. Right? The movement of the Earth around the Sun is what is known as revolution. So it starts from this direction, it goes up to here, it then moves from here to here, it then moves from here to here, it then moves from here to here. Sun is here, the rays of the sun goes in all the direction. These yellow ones are the ones which are representing the rays of the sun. Right? So what happens is that the position of the earth on different dates is different. Right. So what I have done in here is that on June 21 I have taken this position, September here, December here, March 31 here. This one complete revolution by the Earth is actually done in a period of 365 days and 6 hours. Right. Now we tend to ignore this 6 hours and we consider this 365 days and therefore we say that one year has 365 days. Right? And then this one year is based on basically the period taken by earth to revolve around the sun. And every year we keep on adding these 6, hour, six hours. So 6 hours in year 1, 6 hours in year 2, 6 hours in year 3, 6 hours in year 4. How much do we get? We get 24 hours. Do you know what a leap year is? I'm sure you must be. So in a leap year what we have is that instead of 365 days we have 365 plus 1 is equal to 366 days. And which is the month in which there are more number of days in a leap year? It's February. Normally we have 28 days but we consider 29 days in February in a leap year. Why does that happen? That happens because of this. So what happens is every year we keep on adding these 6 hours. Once we reach the 4th year, we have 24 hours and we add one day to make it 366 days. Right? So this is around those time which is taken to complete. But let me come back to the topic again. Now usually we say that there are 4 seasons in a year. Winter summers, spring, and autumn. Right? Do you know why these happen? These happen because the position of the earth changes. Let me show that to you. Now, if you see, when earth is here on June 21, what is happening? The rays of the sun will come and fall on this half right so this half is going to have what it is going to have more heat right vis-a-vis -vis the one which is on the back side of this we discussed about the rotation part as well right so what is going to happen is that it is going to be summers in this part which is the northern hemisphere right so what happens is these sun rays fall directly on the tropic of Cancer. I think let me explain this to you a bit more in detail. So let's say this is the Earth and I'm talking about the position on June the 21st. Right? This is something which we have depicted over here but let me just explain this independently to you. So let's say this is the Earth, this is the Sun. So this is how the axis of the earth look like. So these sun rays basically fall like this. These are basically your tropic of cancer. This is your arctic circle. Right? So when the sun rays fall directly there is going to be heat over this particular portion where the sun rays are falling directly right so you have summers 
in this particular portion right because the sun rays fall directly on the tropic of cancer there are summer in this region if i talk about the places which are close to the north pole right over here because this is a little bit inclined towards the sun what will happen is that these rays are going to fall directly over here so what happens as a result is that this portion which is the red one is going to have continuous day and this you know it might be interesting for you to know that this continuously happens for 6 months right on june the 21st what happens is that this is basically the longest day and if it's the longest day what does follow is and the shortest night right and this position of earth is known as the summer sol's tides now tell me something we spoke about the northern hemisphere right what will happen in the southern hemisphere okay when i say southern hemisphere i'm talking about this portion the conditions are obviously going to be opposite and why would that be this portion will not be receiving any light no light from the sun rays right so therefore it will be winters in these places right the nights are going to be longer nights right okay now come back to the main thing as time passes by the earth moves on please note one thing which is that the axis is always inclined in the same direction now what will happen is that this part this portion that we had actually covered over here is effectively coming like this so the sun rays are starting to going to fall on the other side to some extent if we move even further this green portion here would effectively now stop receiving light which will now directly fall upon the southern hemisphere this green part is the northern hemisphere right so now the direct rays are falling on the southern hemisphere and therefore the conditions which were there here for the northern hemisphere will become the condition for the southern hemisphere right why because the south pole in this case which is this thing is facing towards the sun this position is known as the winter solstice right so these two we've seen what happens in these two in these two situations what is going to happen is that the sun rays that we are talking about basically fall directly on the equator and this position is known as the equinox here basically the rays fall directly on equator here we said it is on tropic of cancer right here it is tropic of capricorn here it falls directly on the equator and these positions are known as the equinox and can you tell me what will happen in this case in so far as day and night are concerned so we knew that the days are longer in the northern hemisphere here days are longer in the southern hemisphere over here in these two situation which is the september 23 and march 21 days and night are equal almost equal days plus nights are almost equal across the earth so it's not that they are more in the northern hemisphere and less in the south southern hemisphere or vice versa it's almost equal on the entire earth right i hope you would have understood this thank you for being with us today